What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. In last week's video, we covered how to perform cohort analysis using only DAX and Power BI, and y'all seem to really like that video. That was uh, allowing you to create this kind of visual matrix showing you how your customers are spending in months after their first order date. And I actually got a follow-up email from a subscriber asking how we could do this in a little bit different way. Basically, the requirements are if we have a table of data, that looks something like this with uh, basically an employee with their name and a start date and end date, how can we visually show that in that same kind of cohort analysis to show how our employees are staying on with our company over time. So in this video, I'm gonna take that requirement and actually show you two different interesting uh, visualizations that you can create with a matrix. You're looking at the first one right here. This is kind of a matrix timeline. You can see that we're looking at each individual employee and their timeline of the time that they worked at the company. So our columns up here is the month, and we can see that Brittany, for example, only worked in July of 2020. Ellie worked from August 2020 through this current month, which is November 2020. So you're able to very easily see the time that they spent with our company on a nice visual basis. Uh, also, second part of this video, we're gonna talk about this employee churn chart. This looks very similar to last week's cohort analysis, but it's a little bit different given that we don't have transactional data. We're now looking at just a start date and an end date and filling in the gaps to see if they were currently working with our company. So it's a little bit more in depth than last week's video, but I definitely recommend that you check that video out before you watch this one. We're gonna be using very similar tricks in this video. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into our demo file. So I have a blank Power BI file, nothing on the canvas, but I have loaded in the data. We have all of our employees. I think there's about 20 of them, 24 employees. They all have different start dates and different end dates. And if they don't have an end date, it means they're currently still with our company. So these three columns actually give us all the data that we need. We just need to start building a little bit more data around it. So the best thing to start out with would be to create a new table. So table tools, new table. And I'm gonna call this months and I'm gonna set that equal to a variable. I'm gonna call this min date, and I'm gonna set that equal to the minimum of my start date column. So this is going to give us the absolute smallest start date on that table, meaning give me the date that the first employee at our company started. That's gonna be the beginning of our timeline. And then I wanna get the number of months since that date up until today. We can do that very easily. I'm gonna call that months, months, since start and that's just the date diff function i want to subtract min date from today and i want to uh, have the month interval so give me the number of months since that minimum start date and then we simply need to return generate series from zero to months since start and we want to step by one so similar to what we did last week we're simply getting a list of values starting at zero up until the beginning, uh, our beginning date. And this is signifying the number of months back from today. And basically the next step would be to create a new column. And I'm gonna call this end of month date. And it's simply EO month today. And we throw in our value column. So remember that EO month gives us the end of the month. We're passing in today as of today, it is November 24th, 2020. So give me 11 30, 2020 and add this number of months. We actually want to subtract that number of months because we're going back in time. So let's click enter. So you can see that looks really nice. Let me just format this a little bit differently. Let's do this one here. So we can see November 2020, October 2020, all the way back to January 2020. And actually before I change that format, uh, we can see it's the end of the month specifically. For example, April 30th is the end of April. So let's reformat that. So that looks really nice. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually do one more step. Let's create a new column here. And I wanna get uh, something I'm going to call end of month text. And I want to format my end of month date to look like mm slash yy. And I'm doing that because if we're gonna create a matrix and this is gonna go across our columns, we kind of want this to be a little smaller so it doesn't take up too much space. So with that, that's all we need to move forward. Let's create our first matrix. Let's throw that on there. Let's get rid of the filter pane. And let's start by adding our end of month text along the columns and our name for that employee name on the rows. And that's not going to work yet, so let's create a dummy measure just for the time being. 
Again, I'm gonna call this one, set it equal to one, just so we can fill in some data and throw that in. Now we have this nice matrix of all of our users uh, for each month that we have in our time period. So we'll create one new measure here. I'm going to call this uh, is current employee. And I'm gonna create a quick variable. I'm gonna call it current month. And we just wanna grab which month we're actually looking at from the column level. And that's gonna be equal to selected value of whichever column uh, is giving us that date that's end of month date. So now we know which month we're looking at. We just need to return if our employee that we're looking at in the rows was with our company during that month. We can do that by saying return and an if statement. You could use switch as well. I'm gonna use if here. If our uh, current month is greater than or equal to the EO month of the uh, employee's start date, and we need to use max because we're in a measure, we need to aggregate down to a single value. But since there's only a single value for each employee, you could use max or min. Uh, basically, it's just getting us that one value for the start date. So EO month start date, let's add a zero at the end because we don't need to add any dates to our start date. We just need to get the end of the month. And, and uh, current month is less than or equal to the exact same thing, EO month max of end date this time and add zero months to that. If that's all true, we want to return a one, else let's return a zero. And let's close that off. And instead of one, our measure, let's throw in is current employee. Nice, so we see a bunch of zeros and ones here. So at this point, we can conditionally format to make this pop out a little bit. So let's conditionally format our background color. Uh, let's set this uh, where zero is going to be white so set zero to white, uh, we can do custom, set one. Uh, let's click okay here. And we have this nice timeline. One thing you'll notice is there actually isn't uh, many blue values here and that's because we're not accounting for the end dates where our user is actually still with our company. So those end dates are blank. We can do that pretty easily with just one little extra step here. So instead of this EO month here, we need to coalesce that EO month. So if this EO month returns a blank, we just want to use the end of month for today. So same thing, EO month today, zero. So that little extra bit is going to handle where there's null values for their end date, and it'll look a little bit better. So that looks great. Last thing I wanna do for this timeline is I want to conditionally format the font color the exact same way. So let's do exactly what we did. So we did custom, zero, make this white, and highest value, we'll just set that to custom to be safe for one. And there we go. So we have this nice timeline. We can get rid of our subtotals because those don't really make sense. And column subtotals as well. And there we go. We have our custom matrix timeline. I think this is pretty cool. I've used this a couple different times. It's pretty useful to visually see something as it was happening. Maybe you can use this as a progress tracker, kind of like a custom Gantt chart, just to give you an idea of a different span of time. So that's pretty cool. But I think the subscriber was specifically asking to understand uh, or perform cohort analysis on his employees to see how they are staying on with the company. So in order to do that, just an extra step here, I'm going to go ahead and create a new tab and build off of this one. So a couple steps, uh, let's go back to our data view. In our data, we need to create a new column that is getting us the end of the month of our start date to put these uh, employees in cohorts of when they started. So I'm gonna call that end of month date start. And I'm going to set that equal to EO month of my start date, again, with zero. So it's just giving me the end of the month for that date. Let's format that nicely. Actually, we wanna format that like the text version. So let's go ahead and do that. So that looks nice right there. Um, so instead of uh, what we have in the rows and columns, I'm actually going to throw in my end of month date, start date in my rows. And instead of my end of month text, I wanna throw in the value because this value is going to signify uh, how many months has occurred since January or since February as we go on. Uh, so at this point, we don't need is current employee. I'm just gonna throw in one again as my placeholder. And we're gonna create one more measure here. I'm gonna paste in this measure to save time. It's very similar to last week's measure, getting us that employee retention percent, but let's walk through this line by line because it's a little bit different. 
current month after is a variable that's giving us that month value. That is what is across the columns. Then we're getting a uh, variable for current month end, which is the value on the rows. Then calc month. Calc month is the end of month, uh, basically taking our row month and our column number. And we're just understanding which month we're looking at for each cell. Then uh, we are creating a variable called result. The main piece of this is this count X function here. So we are filtering our data table down to where our calc month, whichever month we're looking at in that cell, is greater than or equal to the start date of the employee and less than uh, or equal to the end date of that employee. And again, we have that clause in there to handle the null end dates. So getting us that count is getting us the number of employees that were working in that month. And then finally, we're dividing that by the total number of employees for that row or for that start month. And then just to kind of clean up a little bit in the very end, sometimes if all of the employees of a cohort have already been terminated, uh, and basically you're not gonna have any data for later months, this is accounting for that by giving those more recent months a zero, even though they would show up as blank. So I know that's a lot to take in, but very similar to last week, so I definitely recommend reviewing with that video. And then instead of one, we'll throw in employee retention percent. So this is nice, let's go ahead and format that as a percentage and zero decimal places. So it looks good. So we can see that of the employees that started in January, 50% are still with us as of November. Uh, in June, for example, we had 100% retention through uh, two months after June, and then they all dropped off in the same month. So that's nice. We can color this based on that employee retention percent. So let's just do something like that. But custom, let's set that equal to zero again and make that white. So that looks good right there. So that's kind of our final product, but that's showing us the percentage of employees that we've retained over the month. A couple of commenters in the last video asked if we could show the absolute value of how many employees or how many orders we had in that period. And we can do that as well. So that is just a new measure. It's basically just the count version of, um, of that employee retention percent. So I'm gonna just call this employee count and set that equal to one for now. I'm gonna grab the logic, just this guy right here. Or actually, I'll grab all of this and get rid of some items. So employee count, so we'll throw that in. But now we don't need the divide piece of this or the, the bottom. So we just need that count X. and we don't need that in a variable, let's just return it. So that's giving us the count of employees at that time. So employee count, we'll throw that in here. That looks nice. Um, and then we will color that based on the uh, actual percent. That actually makes the most sense here. So let's color, color scale, based on the retention percent. And custom, zero, make it white and then highest value would probably work but we'll just set that equal to one and we are coloring based on the percent but now we're showing the absolute value of those uh, employees that we've retained and then final step here kind of similar to the last one i forgot about this we want to add in that last little clause that we had in employee retention percent this is definitely useful to fill in those later months so we'll return this guy right here. So that's gonna give us these zeros right here uh, so that we have information for when all of our employees have left the company already so that we keep filling in those zeros as time goes on. You might notice that I actually don't have any October data. No one was um, onboarded in October. So that's an extra challenge for you if you would want to make sure that you always have some data for months even when you don't onboard, you need to set up a date table that has a date dimension that will always populate October but that's kind of out of the scope of this video. This video is getting a little bit long, but we covered a lot of good stuff. Um, this was kind of the specific uh, use case that the subscriber had in mind, but I also wanted to show you this cool timeline that I think is, is a pretty cool visualization and allows you to see the data in a pretty interesting way. So if you liked the video, I would love it if you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you check out our training over at training.bielite.com. The link is down in the description. We have some awesome training courses on Power BI DAX and Alteryx. Hope to see you there, and I'll see you in the next video.